This weapon has two big downsides. One, it's very short range. You get outranged by almost everything. Tenatech, Rollers, Enzap, Dualies, whatever this bullshit is. Even the Octobrush? And if you're like me, and you use both this and the original bucket, then switching between the two can be disorienting. The other bad thing about it, is that if you use it, people will say you're bad at the game, even though it got nerfed hard and then buffed later, even if it was your most used weapon in Splatoon 1. There's a definite category of weapons that I wouldn't put the Trisasher into anymore, that I refer to as weapons that aren't necessarily bad, however bad players tend to use them, also known as what what tamed tout weapons that fall into this category include but are not limited to the clash blaster the spooshomatic the splatter shot junior the undercover brella the ink brush the arrow spray the gootuber and the jet squelcher The tri is, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good weapon in this game. It may be short range, but it has a super fast kill time and covers such a large area in front of you that you don't really have to aim super well. As long as you're in range and facing in the direction of your opponent, you're gonna hit your target. You don't even need eyes, just face the right direction and you'll get kills. It's such a good weapon that it almost ruined Splatoon 2 when it first came out, and even after the nerfs, it's still really good. This is the weapon I used almost exclusively to get to X rank in Clam Blitz. Anyone who has played solo clams knows that you have to carry the team more so than ever before in order to rank up. Seriously, even in S+, you know, the second highest rank in the game, there are more missed dunks than the first round of March Madness. Press ZR twice. No, really, that's it. Like with the regular slosher, it's all about the jump then double tap. Mastering the tri slosher is less about the weapon itself and more about movement around the map. Since you get outranged by most weapons, you need to be able to close the gap between you and them, and once you've done that, you're almost guaranteed a kill. Stealth is always a good option, however, I'm all about running a good amount of swim speed up and approach my target diagonally to get within range. If you're going towards enemy ink, then jumping and aiming slightly up as you do the first slosh, and then aiming level as you do the second is always a good option. I call this maneuver the Super Sloshin' Slam Jam! Patent pending. With both the original and new triple buckets, your bombs can be used to paint and attack outside of your bucket range. You can throw a bomb forwards, then throw out a slosh, 
and then swim through the entire trail. The boring tri slasher is more of a support oriented set. You can try to do the burst bomb combo where you hit them with a burst bomb and bucket slosh at about the same time. However, for that to work, you need a direct hit with a burst bomb to do max damage, which I find rarely happens in an actual match. Couple that with ink armor, which can be really useful, but oftentimes isn't, and you'll find yourself a tri slosher that I don't actually use. Ink armor takes a long time to actually activate, and yes, it helps out your whole team, but most of the time, my whole team is fucking dead. But if nothing else, ink armor is a really good way for an instant ink tank refill. Now for the tri Slasher Nouveau, this is the one I actually used to get out of Clan Blitz Hell. Splat Bombs are great, they have a huge variety of uses. Throw them to attack people up high, roll them to attack people on the ground, drop them at your feet to get away if you're being chased. Ink Storm is also really good. It's free map control, a good source of chip damage, always useful for doing pushes. Aboard, Scott. Aboard now. It's okay. He can't see me. I can see you. He can see me. Since the tri saucer is all about movement, stacking swim speed is a pretty good idea. And since it's a pretty light weapon, using run speed can also be useful. I've seen other tri slosher users using nothing but swim speed and run speed, and honestly that's not a bad idea. However in Clams, I like using some ink resistance too. It's honestly an underrated ability in Splatoon 2. For me personally, I like having a lot of map control, and accomplish that by spamming bombs, throwing up rain clouds, and you know me, I'm always double tapping. So Ink Saver Main, Ink Saver Sub, and Special Charge can help accomplish that. If you're a more aggressive player, then coupling Comeback with Quick Respawn can help you take a lot of risks and still come out on top. And thanks for watching. When I started playing Splatoon 2, I told myself I wouldn't only use the tri Saucer again and I'd learn new weapons, but it's tough to resist what's already familiar, so here's some of my highlights of my journey through S Plus Clan Blitz, where I've carried the team in pretty much every match.
Thank <laughs> you.